let's jump into a little Q&A and get from there. Bean from the Cryptoverse 2. I don't know what that is. Everybody loved Ben's channel. Ben had a good one about uh, will Bitcoin capitulate. I recommend everybody to take a look at that. Bicky says it well. Disclaimer, not financial or tax advice. Channel and Timbers is only. Just an opinion. Dan is not an expert, as you can probably tell. Or a financial planner. Perform your own research. Rob, did you say you're using CoinLedger for taxes? Yes, I've used them for the last two years. It's very simple. From the time that I got my username and password, put all the data in, and then shipped them over to my CPA, it took me 30 minutes. I am not here to pour. I don't have the time to pour over tons and tons of uh, spreadsheets. I just, I, I love the factory do it, do that job. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Long-term time for any more than a month. That's true. And before I go on, I'm going to try to do something differently. The first, the first video that, or the first section segment that we talked about, where we talked about uh, Polygon and Matic being linked to New Bank and really to a lesser extent or a greater extent, Warren Buffett. Do you think that is a positive or just like, oh, they're just there to, you know, give some type of advice and it's not a big deal? I'm curious what's, uh, what everybody says. Put that in the comments right now. <laughs> classic, classic Happy Gilmore. Ah, uh, This is the best cult. Conning has a good point. Look, I don't know why people like... Like we talked about this yesterday. I don't see the problem with people saying, ah, crypto is a cult and da-da-da. You know, so are a lot of companies. And they're crazy. But guess what? Cults, uh, they seem to be uh, uh, market movers. And we gave the example yesterday of Apple and CrossFit and some other stuff. Let's see. Benny. <laughs> Benny. You leave your body when you die, health is overrated. While you're here though, it's important to have a little bit of health, I think. Try swimming lakes up here. I would love to do that. I despise cold weather, but uh, the colder the better when you're swimming. <laughs> James says, Rob, thanks you for finally acknowledging that it's not always possible to do your own research. Look, it takes, uh, it takes some humility to, to look at things and go, you know what, it's uh, kind of impossible to do your own research constantly because there's so many things going on behind the scenes, no one knows. And sometimes even the upper people don't know what the hell's going on. So again, that's why like in this, in crypto, it's the wild west. I gotta agree with Gary Ginzer on this one. It is the wild west. And for, for one particular project to be able to navigate all the pitfalls is extremely tough, extremely tough. And I don't know which one's going to make it. That's why I spread things around because I can't put one, my, all my eggs in one basket. That's crazy. That'd be like in the dot-com era, just going, you know what? Pets.com looks awesome. Going all in. Ah, the clown part always freaks me out. Don't worry. It's not real. Yeah, I'm waiting for it. There's always the uh, adult websites that spam me. I don't know why. I have nothing but admins. Protect me, Lord Gary. Eric says, I love the dollar cost average during taxes and I got a headache. How can I relieve this headache when paying taxes? Super simple. So I have the same issue. And what I did, I actually knew this for free right now. There's a link in the description somewhere oh yeah crypto tax is made simple here's how to use the video the link is crypto trader but it's it's coin ledger and you can you can integrate via an api integration with all your your exchanges central or decentralized all your wallets hot or cold and you can pull all that data in there and it can show you all your transactions so i am like i said I'm not the guy that's going to pour over a bunch of spreadsheets and meticulously write down because I do, I dollar cost average every single day. I would blow my head off if I had to do that part too. So I let the, I let the software do it. That's it. So just try that. And then right now you don't have to, like you can do that right now. It'll show you everything. And if you want to generate a report, then you have to pay for it. But if not, 
you just put it in and take a look and then do what you got to do. Uh, if, I mean, just for your records, but for the, the report you have to pay, I think it's been a hundred and $200, uh, for, for your tax reports and everything in, in line. If not, you can still do it and take a look at it. So I like that. Luis says, Rob, Coinage was good for exchanges. Did you have a good experience with Walt and MetaMask? No, that was one of the problems. There was a little bit of a hiccup. I think they got a little bit better now, uh, but I had a problem with my MetaMask, but I didn't have a ton of, on MetaMask. So I didn't really care. I just put it in manually. Hmm. What's a good number of products for a diversified portfolio? I don't know. I guess it's everybody's um, tolerance. You know, some people, like I remember when I first got in, it was like over 50 different projects. That was a little crazy. Nowadays, I try to stick to around the top 50 or so. I mean, the top 50 as far as market cap. And uh, then, of course, I have some DGen plays. That's why I have the channel Dan DGen. But uh, for me, I always think it should be um, Bitcoin, Ethereum. That's just me because I think it's the safest ones and they've been at the top for quite some time. Not to say they can't fall off and all that stuff, but uh, they're kind of like the blue chips. And then you kind of go down, down the road for the next level and you got your layer ones, the other ones. You got your Avalanche and your Polka Dots and your Nier and your Cardano and your Solanas and all that stuff. And uh, I have a uh, section of that, not all of them. And then of course, past that a little bit. So you know, it just depends what you want to do. The real question though is just show up and learn about all these different projects and who is building on them and how they're making progress. That's the big thing. Like the S&P 500, you can just set it and forget it and just walk away for 10 years and it's not a big deal. Uh, but if you put all your money into, say, Apple, you know, uh, why wouldn't you check on Apple every so often and say, oh, well, that's awful. All the, you know, all the processing chips, we have, a, we have an enormous shortage. They can't make any computers or something. I think you wouldn't want to be, I don't know, selling just saying. Ah. Do you have some gaming projects? I have, yes. I have Genso Kishi, which is built on Polygon from Polygon Studios and Gala Games. And I think there's something else. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't know what that means. Ah, thank you, Vicky. Dan DJ and Sega Houston channel is right there. And you can find that in the description as well. I'm rooting for Simon. We're all rooting for Simon. We're all rooting for, for crypto or Celsius just to become whole without a huge haircut. 20% haircut would be nice, but whatever. Oh, yeah, Everdome. I didn't really think about that. But Everdome is a metaverse play, uh, per se. So I invested in that one. Cornucopias was a good one, too. Hi, Rob, what price did you buy sweat? So all the early investors got it at around a penny and a half or something like that. And uh, right now it's probably hovering just above that. Let's see. Whoops. Well, let's see what I... So everything that I buy or get into for Dan Degen, because people are like, you know, dump on me? I'm like, well, if I could. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, this is the list. So Sweatcoin, I bought it at 0.014. And I got this many tokens. And the all-time high was nine cents and the price today was not seven cents. It's probably like two cents, maybe even lower than that. But everything I got into was a lockup period because that made sense to me. So I can't touch Sweatcoin for 12 months and then it gets unlocked over 24. Fame was the same way, Everdome was the same way. Again, so Kishi, still the same way. On oh, December 15th, it's pretty good. Should have a, something coming in in December. So that's what's up. One second. There's something in the background. Oh, anybody buy Aptos? Aptos today. You know, there was a good video by CTO Larson talked about Aptos. And uh, I encourage everyone to uh, take a listen to that before they do anything with Aptos. CTO Larson. All right. Very nice. Yeah, I used to have a lot more of 
Polygon 2. Alex is holding that for me as well. And I think, I wonder how the Flare airdrop will be handled in the Celsius case. I don't know. Maybe they can use Flare to, to fund to make everybody whole because it's not like they're going to, they're really good at giving things back. I don't know what that is. Oh, J-Lo. Where do you recommend getting a stablecoin loan? At the best rates and highest amounts to borrow for staked assets. I've, I did loans before. It didn't work out too hot. But maybe this is not a bad time. But then you got you to gotta think about it. You have to think about this very seriously. Because I know Michael Saylor talks about how everybody who's rich just takes out huge loans and they have collateral and they don't pay anything because it's a loan and that's what it is. So just remember this, like we talked about how things can go down lower. I took out a loan with Celsius and I used that to, I didn't do the degenerate thing, which was take out a loan, get cash, and then put it into crypto. I thought that was a dumb idea. What I did was I took a loan out and I put that into my house in Puerto Rico because it has equity and it's pretty stable and that was it. And then of course the margin calls came in and they came in and came in. I would just put in more Ethereum, more Ethereum, more Ethereum. And then I was doing the uh, Coin Bureau conference and I was somewhere in Spain. I missed a margin call and they liquidated me, all of it. So all my Ethereum got liquidated. All right, so that's a taxable event. Well, that sucks, but the money that was there, I don't have to pay it back because it's in my, I took that money and put it into my house. The Ethereum is gone, but the Ethereum that I collateralized to cover that loan, they gave it back. Unfortunately, it's still there, which kind of sucks. So now you got to think about this, JLo. If you think that we're at the bottom and you want to do that and you want to borrow against your staked assets, you can, but I'm going to warn you right now that if something goes down sideways, you're going to have to collateralize that in some other way with other crypto. And I think it just, these assets fluctuate greatly. I think we know that in crypto. I can see uh, for other collateral for loans and like typical loans where you get like a second mortgage on your house. I get that, even though interest rates are atrocious right now. But for that one, I don't know the place. I'm going to stay out telling you be careful because I've seen it happen uh, the opposite way. And that's it. And I think that's it for today. Yes, that's it. So I answered everybody's questions. No one has anything for me. All right, everybody. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, all that good stuff. And that is it for today. Uh, as a reminder, I think we're going to do DCA tomorrow because I am traveling on Friday to Houston. The videos uh, are up for JLo would like this. Uh, how to stake uh, polka dot, or excuse me, how to stake uh, Cosmos and Atom using your ledger will be up on Friday. Also the one on near and that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by guys. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios.